Hi, I'm David Burris with Clear and Forge. And the uh, first thing I want to tell you today is the best thing you can have in your blacksmith shop is a good dog. So this is Miss Sophie. And you've probably seen little bits of her in earlier videos unintentionally. So this is her time in the limelight. Since blacksmiths were the original recyclers, we're going to repurpose a common horseshoe and turn it into a letter opener. Uh, this is not really good enough steel to make a, a bona fide knife, but it's a good project in learning how to make a knife because the techniques are the same. Uh, no matter if you're using good steel or junky steel. Uh, some of the skills that you've seen in other videos, like uh, shaping and spreading the iron. We're going to do the same thing in this. Uh, actually the the process of making a leaf is very similar to what it takes to make a knife. We're going to cut this just short of the first nail hole here and use this section to form our blade and this will become the handle. And again if you think of the iron moving like clay then you've got a, a lump of clay quarter inch thick by three quarters of an inch wide or so to stretch out into this blade. And uh, the new thing you're going to learn today is how to draw down an edge. And this, like I say, is the same technique no matter what kind of knife you're making. This is how you do it. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is heat this up and cut it on the hardy and then we'll begin to form it. Uh, these are the wolf jaw tongs. And they're made to receive a variety of uh, sizes of steel, so make sure your whatever tongs you're using will grip the iron solidly so that it's not going to flop out and uh, potentially injure you once it's hot. I'm going to place the portion of the shoe that I want to cut into the hottest part of the fire so we heat up the part we want. Again, this is the hardy. It's just a little chisel-like tool that goes in the hardy hole on the anvil. There are, there are different kinds of hardies. There's a cold hardy and a hot hardy. The hot hardies tend to be thinner and sharper, and they're only made for cutting hot steel on. The cold hardies are a little bit stubbier and shorter and you can actually, they're, they're tempered to a harder temper so that you can actually hammer cold iron on them and, and cut it off. I don't advocate cutting all the way through on your hardy. I like to cut almost all the way through and then finish breaking it because if you cut all the way through, you can damage the edge of your hardy. Okay, I'm going to lock that in the post vise and finish breaking it off. Alright, so there's our piece that we're going to form our blade out of. times iron was such a precious commodity that uh, if you're out in the countryside a lot of times you'll see a, an old homestead where the only thing left standing is the chimney. And a lot of times that was intentionally done. Those, those places were burned down like the family decided they were going to try their fortunes out west and wanted to leave the home place. They would set fire to the house and burn it down and then rake through the ashes and recover all the nails and take them with them because they knew they'd need nails to build their new place. So uh, it, was, it wasn't like running down to Lowe's and buying another box of nails in those days. I don't think you can say Lowe's. Yep, so you can't, couldn't run down it wasn't to the like hardware. running down to the hardware store and buying another box of nails in those days. I'm going to straighten this 
out a little bit where the blade's going to be. I'm actually going to heat it up and, and take some of the curve out of the whole shoe just so it's a little more comfortable in your hand. I like to leave the, the end of the shoe and the, the slotted nail hole so that when you look at it, it's obvious that this came out of the horseshoe. That's part of the novelty of the repurposing stuff like this and being able to see what it, that it had a former life from what it's got now. Everything you do in the blacksmith shop, you got to get it hot and hit it hard. Right. You're going to begin to draw the, the end down into a point. Again, I'm using the rounded surface of the anvil, or the horn of the anvil, and the, this side of the hammer to begin to pinch that down into the point of my knife. And there's the point. I'm going to begin to Flatten it out a little bit. And I'm going to come back here and put a notch in so that I have a transition between my blade and my uh, handle. I think I've still got enough heat to do that. There's my notch. Now, you can see the thickness of this. What's going to determine how long this blade ends up is this the spine of the knife, the back side of the knife. Uh, we, we want what we call a distal taper and it's going to be thickest right where it joins the handle and gradually taper down to a point. So we're going to watch that to see how long our blade can be. When you start to draw out a knife your mind does a little trick with you. It, immediately, when you think knife, it wants what you're working on to look like a knife. And we don't want it to look like a knife until we're ready for it to be. So it's important when you're drawing it out to keep the side that's going to be your edge and the side that's going to be the spine of it the same thickness. Because we're actually going to draw the edge down out of that when we're ready to. So it's going to start drawing it out. Hitting it on the narrow side, and then drawing it on the flat side to get. We want to get our length out of it before we begin to draw down the edge. Now, if the tip starts to mess up on you, just come back and. It's easier to maintain that as you go than it is to reclaim it if you get too far and it gets too thin. So. some length on it now. Still still pretty thick. We still got a lot of metal to work with. So we're going to continue to draw it out.
you notice as I get out towards the end where it's already getting thinner, I don't have to hit it as hard. If you hit it too hard after it's already beginning to thin down, you'll just distort it. So you can see our distal taper beginning to form. See it's, it's gradually getting thinner. I'm going to work this down a little more right in here. And notice it's the same thickness on both edges. So we're doing good. That's probably about as far as I'm going to go with this since it's not a very strong steel. Uh, the higher carbon steel you're working with, the thinner you can get it and still have a usable edge. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is draw the edge down out of this. See, it's the same thickness on either side. So to draw the edge down, we're going to be pulling this material down. It's going to move this way. It's also going to move this way. So it's going to stretch two directions as we pull it down. So we're going to compensate for the movement in this direction by doing a counter bend on the blade. Uh, before we start drawing the edge down, we're going to heat it up and bend it slightly over the horn so that when we're pulling this edge down, it'll kick it back straight. If we don't do that first, it'll curl the knife blade back on itself. and it, It's a kind of a funky looking banana knife that's not very useful. So. And I made a lot of those before a good friend showed me this trick. So. You should never have to make a banana knife if this is your first one. switch off and use a ball peen hammer. Uh, it's got a little rounder face for drawing this edge down. And just a word about your hammer faces. It's real important to keep them uh, nice and smooth and shiny. Uh, any ding or mark on your hammer face will act like a stamp on your work. With that hot iron, it will it will translate into the work. So the smoother you can keep your hammer faces, the, the cleaner your work will be. Uh, if you don't have a belt sander to clean them up on, you can clean them with a hand file. I can, I'll demonstrate that for you here in a little bit. All right, pull this edge down. I'm going to work kind of on the corner of the anvil here. And the reason I do that, if I try to do this in the middle, then the hammer tends to hit the anvil before it hits the iron. So I'm getting out here where I can just work on the part that I want to work on. And again, you don't have to go as hard down where it's thin. I don't know if you can see that, that bevel starting to form. Uh, we're going to heat it up and work the opposite side away from us because uh, we don't really want a knife with an edge off to one side. The edge needs to be in the center of the spine. And when you're putting your blade back into the fire after you've started to form the edge, always put the spine down. Put the thickest part. You don't want to lay it flat on its side. You want the heat to go around it so it heats evenly. And 
Here again, I'm working it near an edge where I can hit the, the metal instead of the anvil with it. already started to straighten back out. And where it's kind of curved out on the end, if I want to kick that back the other direction, I just hammer along the back of the blade. just happened with me dropping this is why you wear heavy boots to blacksmith them instead of sandals because you can teach yourself blacksmithing and the highland jig if you don't wear heavy shoes. around the edges but we're going to finish it up with the file anyway. Uh, I am going to use a tool called a flatter uh, to smooth out some of the hammer marks. Get my apprentice Caleb in here to help me with that. This is the flatter. It's uh, it's like a big iron for ironing out the wrinkles in the steel. And just like its name, it makes things flatter. Here's our roughed out knife. See. Got a, a rough cut file here for the initial shaping. And I start on the what's going to be the edge. I don't know if you can see the dark spots in there. Those are where I've got a little bit of a valley, so I'm going to file it that way until that's shiny all the way around. That, then I'll have an even edge. See, there's a little low place. Just want to keep going. Even though it's making my edge a little thicker, it has to be trued up before we can file it down into a sharp edge. Uh, one thing you see a lot of people pick up a file 
and start doing that, but the file really only cuts one way. So if you just get a good long stroke with it, you'll do a lot more work and you won't heat your file up. nice thing about filing things as opposed to working them down on a belt sander for one you can feel through the file where the irregularities are puts you better in touch with your work for another thing it's hard to make a mistake with a file that you can't fix whereas a belt sander in a blink of an eye can mess up a whole day's work so sorry self uh, come on. I've got the edge pretty well shaped now, so I'm going to clamp it in the vise where I can see the side of it, and I'm going to begin to form the edge that way. This is a, a very basic way to do a knife. If we were going to get elaborate, we would form a ricasso here and, and do some other things. But just starting out, this this will make a serviceable blade for you. Now what you're seeing here are some of the hammer marks that we didn't get all the way out with the flatter. So I'm just going to file so those disappear. Brace yourself with your legs apart where you get your upper body into this. It'll you get more out of each stroke of the file as well. Right. Most people think of hand filing something is a really tedious job, but as you can see, it didn't really take very long to get that into a fairly nice looking state. Now I've got a little irregularity here. I'm going to lock it in the vise and true the spine up some. And then we've got to shine the other side. Some of those <clears throat> marks there, if you want to get them out, you can do it with hand sandpaper. You can finish this out as far as you want to go with it, but you might want to leave some imperfections in it just so you can tell it's been made with a hammer. But there's your basic letter opener. Um, I have to caution you, <clears throat> this does not open emails effectively. But uh, thankfully, most people still get their bills in envelopes, and it gives one a great deal of satisfaction to rip into one of those with a knife you've made with your own hands. So enjoy, and uh, happy blacksmithing. <laughs>